afternoon. Welcome to my presentation. I'm very happy to speak to you about our experience with Signals Notebook, what we learned, what we did at Chivada. And I'm also happy to show you a nice slide as an introduction here. Uh, this is also where Givenaut is in. Uh, you see lots of food, and I guess it's a little bit Indian food. And this is good to show after lunch. Before, I think it would be very challenging to show something like this. But Givenaut, to start with, is a Swiss-based uh, company in the flavor and fragrance business. That's why we have lots of so nice pictures. Uh, and let me start to, oops, sorry, to introduce where we are in the market, in the fragrance and beauty, taste and well-being. And here you see some of our products that we deliver to our customers. We are in the B2B business, so not, nothing of our products can you buy directly on the market. It's always that we go through a... Uh, a food company or a beauty company or a fragrance company or something like this. So you see we're in the food sector, uh, but also in, uh, in the beauty sector. Uh, and Shimano, when you see this slide, this is about the market. The orange segment is our market share. And what you see here is that in the flavor and fragrance business, we have almost 25% of the complete world market. This means we are the biggest flavor and fragrance house in the world. And when you see to our presence, we are in 185 locations worldwide. Uh, we have 52 physical presence in countries. We are also based in Mumbai with sales offices. We have operations in Pune, further south in India, and also up in the north in the Delhi part. We have 79 production sites and almost 17,000 full-time employees. This is something where we are very proud of. This is the luxury and shiny segment of luxury fragrances, which we do for our customers like Dior, Yves Saint Laurent, Lancôme, or Prada, or any you see here. We have a long history from 90, uh, 1932 up to the recent things. And I invite everyone who flew into Mumbai airport to go to the shop and buy some luxury perfumes, because then you will hopefully buy some of our products as well. This here is the women's section. And here we have also men's perfume, where you see some of them. With this, I would like to conclude the introduction to Shivada and start talking about what our joint history with Revity was. And we had over 20 years already now with Revity or, or Cambridge Soft, how it was called previously. This is how the story began. In 2001, Shivada was part of the Roche organization. At that time, Roche decided to spin off Shimada as a separate entity, as a known company to the market. This meant for us, we needed to have new chemical solutions, uh, chemical software uh, on our own. And then we looked at the market, what it was around, and we took the risk to be the first European enterprise customer with Cambridge Soft at that time. Uh, the big Advantage then was that we got ChemDraw and an ActiveX plugin, and we already had web browser applications at that time, which was something very uh, early for other competitors. Getting ChemDraw was a real plus to our scientists because everybody knew it, people wanted it, and even today we're happy to have it, and it's always great to have Pierre Mario visiting us and give us some demonstration about what's new and how to draw faster. By 2009, we had a full fledge of an application from uh, Cam Cambridge Soft. We had the bioassay, the biosar for searching, the inventory, the chemical databases, the e-notebook, and the Spotfire application. After 20 years, somewhere in 2000, 
18 or so, we faced tremendous problems. Our CAMRED was no more upgradable. Our Enoped application, the CBOE application, became very slow. People were angry in the labs, and the look and feel of all the applications was no longer modern. So in summary, we needed a change. We needed to do something. In September 2019, uh, we had the first Signal Notebook presentation. And at that time, we did not fall in love with it. It didn't rock our mind. Like the numbering system at that time was too trivial. And we should test it a global numbering system because we couldn't live with this trivial thing. Uh, today, this numbering system is good. It was implemented based on our recommendation. And so this is how uh, Signals Notebook takes uh, customer uh, reactions up and implements. But because in September 2019, it was not ready for us to switch, we looked, of course, also to competition. We did not find at that time, so five years back, very good competition. There was some, but we didn't feel like we should move. So we waited a little bit. And in June 2020, we agreed to try Signals Notebook. Uh, my colleague, Jos Kiener, and I, we got the test tenant to play. And this was really ideal because this was the lockdown period in COVID. We were all in the home office and we had something to play. Ben Brock from Gravity was our trainer. And we started to like Signals Notebook. After the first training, it took us three days that we investigated the API and we start to like it because we could do all the necessary transactions. And most importantly, we could get the data out of Signals Notebook. Because if it's my data and if I put it to a SaaS application, I also want to get access to it. I also want to work with it. I want to extract it. So this was then convincing to us. And in September 2020, we engaged in a pilot study uh, with some users. We had 30 pilot users from nine locations. We had to cover various needs from chemistry, formulation, fermentation, molecular biology, enzyme transformation, processes, like extraction, distillations, sensory science. So this is really a challenge to work with one application across so many different scientists. We had an initial kickoff training with Ben Brocke, and then we had two Q&A sessions where people played and they could come back with questions. Uh, and we had all answering and we went through sites by sites to see what was missing, what do we do to do. And the pilot, in our case, only took three to four weeks, and we had a clear go-ahead from all users. Everybody was saying, we want to go, the new application is faster, we don't want to stay on the old CBOE environment. So June 22nd in 2021, we had uh, the kickoff day. The way we organized it, Early morning, we blocked the creation of new experiments in eNotebook. Users could still search and finish existing experiments, but they could not create a new experiment in Notebook. From day one, they were forced to go into Signals Notebook, and we created all users with an IME workflow one hour before going live. So one hour before the training, each user got the link to Signals Notebook, and he was uh, having access. We had then training sessions with Dover Baker from Revity. And again, we had two follow-up Q&A sessions where people could come in, ask questions. Same they could do with Google Sheets, where we tracked all the questions and, uh, and, uh, and, and helped users to get started. In our case, we did the user migration in two waves. First part was users which needed chemical drawing, and then all the other users who don't need any chemical drawing. But 
no user was given the flexibility to stay on the old CBOE as long as he wanted and move over. That was not the case in our approach. Overall, we had happy users since the rollout. The Signals Notebook got very well accepted, only a few complaints. And everyone enjoys the speed and the intuitive use of Signals Notebook. As I said, the switching from the old notebook to Signals Notebook was done in one day. No choice was given to the users. And we have done this in 16 sites with 350 users. What was key is that the pilot users already tested and knew a lot about the experiment. And they are key in this transition because colleagues can then first go to them, see what's happening and to get the quick answer. And we create something like a thousand experiments every month in our organization. And you see very shortly, we went up to a 10,000 plus. Today, even the full digit number is displayed in our uh, tenant. What was important is the system definition. In our case, we defined five system templates, which are enough for our organization. We did not use the default one. We hide this away. Uh, we use only two samples for a time being. This is a chemical sample and any other sample. And here we use the default template. We are in the process to add now more samples, but this is a, still in piloting. We added projects into the admin definable object. This allows projects admin to add and deactivate projects, which are then dynamically given to the users. In their system template, they can select the projects they are assigned to. And this is really a selection from a pull down because they, these, these might be varying. But then the department, division, the site, and the visibility is by default given for each user. There is no selection, and this comes up, uh, pops up automatically without the choice to taking something else. On the visibility, we took a decision that all our experiments are visible to all Shivanda users. This has been a corporate policy that everything is public and shared across. And as I see now about data science and data wrangling, this is where more and more companies move to, although we could still separate some specific uh, users in, into different segments, but this is company decision. We use 30 user groups. We have one which is called all Shivana users, all divisions, all departments and all site users. This was initially enough for us to give enough flexibility to guide uh, the template to the, the, to the users. And we start now to adapt them a little bit in more granular things when it comes to other uh, applications like I will tell you afterwards. To create these users and the users groups, it's very easy to do through this through the API, and we love to, to do that in, in batchwise mode. This is how we did the user creation through NIME. We had an Excel which was reading to NIME. NIME is a data science platform, and we did the uh, post request you see to create the user. This goes like this. That's quite easy. Then you need to get this ID here and populate it to the system uh, groups. And you run through all these post, get, get, post um, API calls to create the users with the respective user group uh, association. Only recently, I figured out this could be quite easy also through the bulk creation and the bulk import or the bulk update functionality within using within a signals notebook. I needed this bulk update now because we had additional license and I had to activate and deactivate some users. And if you need to do this manually for 350 users, 
uh, I don't want to click through, so it's easier to do it in a bulk update. And this worked also flawlessly in Signal's notebook. With our NIME server, we also do nightly data extractions out of Signal's notebook. Uh, this is key for us that we extract the data from, from Signal's notebook and send it to a PostgreSQL database, which is internally hosted. There we have like number experiments and all the attributes to it and the logging dates, et cetera, et cetera. This is then used to create monthly KPI reports, which we send out to management. And it gives a really nice overview on how SQL's notebook is used across departments and sites. With the dashboard in SQL's notebook, you can do the same, but with the data exported, we can do also the same over a time. So we see how was it used last year, next month, et cetera, et cetera. We also use uh, it for the user management. We extract the last login date, and this gives us an excellent understanding how users are using it. Do we have users who use this every day? Or do we have users weekly or monthly? And uh, it's just something that gives a feeling of, of the application. On a weekly basis, our NIME server goes into Signal's notebook with the API, extracts all open experiments, which have not been modified for the last 30 days. We then send out automatically an email to all users with the link to please close these experiments because our policies as well, we would like users to close experiments and not keep them open for all the time because by closing experiments, you show that you finished your experiments and data is finalized. So some recommendations for you in case you want to go to Sigla's notebook. If you do a pilot, pilot users are really, really very important. I suggest to have at least in each site and in each group, at least one better two, because these people will then help you to go live with a bigger team. And you could also think of using some of these pilot users as a configuration manager for the group templates. So they could create experimental templates and manage them for the group and be a little bit in between you as the admin and the team members. What's very careful to be thought out is that you structure the experiment attributes well. This is later extremely important for searching. If you don't have them in good place, searching and finding your experiments will be hampered. Also use the admin defined object wisely. Like in our case, we used it for projects. Also define your user group smartly and use them in the security rules. This is not very critical because you can adapt this once you have gone live. And we went through some changing in our security roles to make certain things more granular. And in my opinion, when you switch from CBOE to Signal's notebook, do this in one day. Last, but not least, it's also important to give thoughts about if you want what you want to do with the legacy archive in case you're already on CBOE. We have been almost 15 years on C CBOE e notebook. So in our case, we had Revity to extract all the experiments and put them into Signal's notebook archive. This is really good because this way you do not lose any information. What's a disadvantage is that when you want to search, you need to do two searches to search across an archive and your new experiments. This is something we don't like so much. Users got adapted to it uh, for the time being, but um, Still, it's a requirement. We would love to have this possible, at least on chemical structure, 
to search across all the new experiments and the archive ones. But what's really nice is when you have the ELN archive and also the new ones, you can export your reaction data in the so-called unified data model format. This is a, um, a common data format where you can exchange reaction data. And it's very easy with the API to extract everything from the ELN archive. And I did this in our case in order to prepare an internal reaction database where we can then do, do some more configuration and searching on all the, the experiments done in the past. But this is a decision you need to take. What do you do with all your legacy archive data? Because you really don't want to trash it. It's reaction database is a big asset and we're going to replay uh, to to explore what type of reactions we have done. Are we having specific typical reactions and other ones? And this you can only do in case you have the data in a format like in the unified data model and you can work on it. So how did we then evolve further with the Signals Notebook? I mean, it has been now three years that we are live on Signals Notebook. Since then, we added biological materials and we integrated Signals Notebook with our own chemical registration. I will talk about these points in more detail later. On the internal roadmap, we have an inventory project ongoing. This was supposed to be launched April 1st, but we have some internal delays and so we postponed it again. But we want to use the inventory model within Signals Notebook and you see here uh, three sites from our uh, organization where we are already uh, doing uh, pilots on it. We want to do formulations. In here, we await the formulation model to be more complete, and then we will also plan to use it. We have ongoing pilots in this area as well. So, to the materials, we have done with our biotech people, a pilot for plasmid, strains, and protein collections. By now, we are live with these three material uh, libraries. People are really happy. And the good thing is we can also do sequ uh, sequence searches, blast searches in these uh, material libraries. This is really a cool thing what people enjoy and it helps us to be more organized. What kind of plasmids did we order? What kind of strains do we have? Before this was all in local Excel data, uh, local Excel sheets, and now it's organized within Signals Notebook and gives us also the advantage we can search across where did we use this plasmid or where in which experiment did we use this strain. This is really a cool thing. In our case, what was a little bit problematic is to get alignment across sites, uh, especially what kind of fields would you like to have in there? Because each site had its own Excel sheets, own fields, and we needed to kind of align and then also trust that users do not edit uh, records from colleagues. This, in our case, we haven't fixed by the security rules so strictly. Uh, it's also more cumbersome, but the thing is through the audit trail, you would always see if somebody would do some damage to your data. And we said, let's trust the people. And this is enough that we, see, we would see in the audit trail. Uh, last, I'd like to speak about our integration where we integrated our corporate chemical uh, registration system with Signals Notebook. This is really a sweet thing. Uh, in the samples table, you see this uh, red box registered to ChemReg. So if a user created a sample ID and a sample, he can go into this register to ChemReg. This is our own external action which goes to our 
chemical registration application. From there, the application reads out the chemical structure, the name, the producer, the chemist, and physical properties of the sample directly into the web application. The user then needs to only add a few click boxes, which you see in the upper or in the lower right sector. Uh, when he specifies this, he says submit. There is a duplicate check. Uh, if there is a duplicate, he gets an additional screen where he needs to resolve duplication. To, does he want to add a batch or does he want to um, create a new, uh, new, new, new entity? Um, and once done, the direct the corporate ID gets written back into the samples table of Signals Notebook. So this is a very nice integration of Signals Notebook with our internal application and people just click through and we are ensured that the data quality increases by combining these systems because in the past we did a lot of copy paste and by doing copy paste from one application to the other, you always lose information and in insert uh, uh, mistakes. The whole process today is really user friendly. People like it, Seagull's notebook in combination with our other application. With this, I would like to come to my last slide and just tell you why I continue to like Seagull's notebook. It's the modern look and feel. Today, it really looks like this. I have no idea in 10 years if we feel the same. But today, users are happy when they use the application. It's quite easy to start for newcomers. Uh, there is not lots of training needed, and they get easily started. And of course, the speed of the application, which is quite a difference to the old CBOE application, this is what people enjoy because it just goes fast. And then the continuous evolution of the application and release is a big asset because we see what's coming. And when you look to the roadmap, it's just impressive to see what kind of features, functionalities come. And we see that the application becomes richer and richer. And because it gets monthly deployed, we can also deploy it to our organization. The regular upgrades, I need to tell you, is also somewhat a stress for an admin because you will be seeing or users will be seeing what comes out as new things. So they see, for instance, plate management. Then they come, Andreas, I'd like to have plate management. And I say, hey, wait, we need to do something first. We can't release it now, but let's work on it. And they, but they, because they are seeing it this and they have the transparency, they also come with a, with requests to you as admin, and, uh, but I like the process because this is also a challenge and it's working together with the team to make better applications within our organization. So with this, I would like to come to the thank you slide and I'd really like to thank the Revity team 